Got another question on the redox titrations topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay so before we start I'll just talk through this diagram that's summarizing the information here. So they've got this hydrated salt of sodium sulfite so 2.4 grams they've dissolved it to generate the aqueous sulfite ions so if you just look at the ratio in that equation the moles of sulfite ions is equal to the moles of the hydrated salt. So the sulfite ions are in there. They're then put into a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask and made up to the mark. A tenth 25 cm cubed is taken out. Acidic conditions are created. Normally you would use sul dilute sulfuric acid for that. So in the conical flask you've got your sulfite ions and your H plus ions. And then a titration is carried out using KMNO4 that concentration and that was the main titra and we're not given the equation here but we are told that the ratio is 2 moles of MnO4- minus to 5 moles of sulfite ions so first thing we'll do moles of MnO4- minus used in the titration concentration times volume in decimeters cubed 3.81 times 10 to the minus 4 Next thing, we apply that mole ratio to find the moles of um, sulfite ions in the 25 cm cubed. So 5 over 2 times that 3.81 times 10 to the minus 4, 9.525 times 10 to the minus 4. Next thing we do is multiply by 10 to get the moles of sulfite ions in the 250 cm cubed solution. Obviously we do that because 25 was a tenth of that original solution volume. So that's 9.525 times 10 to the minus 3. And then if you just remember where these sulfite ions came from, they came from there, and they came from the dissolving of the salt. And we established that the ratio of sulfite ions to salt was 1 to 1. So we now know the moles of the hydrated salt in that 2.4 gram sample. So to work out the formula of the salt, the XH2O part, we need to know the MR of the salt. Well, we can work that out now. Mass over moles, 252. Next thing we need to do is subtract the MR of the sodium sulfite part. So that's 126.1. So if we take that off the 252, we're left with 125.9. So that's obviously the, the MR of the XH2O part. So if we divide that by 18, which is the MR of H2O, we get 7 to the nearest whole number. And so the formula of the salt is Na2SO3.7H2O. And then for the last part of the question, we've actually got to work out the redox equation. Um, the way they've written this, I think, is a little bit misleading because I think it's much easier to work out the half equations and then combine them to give the overall equation. That's the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so the first thing we would do is summarize this information here. So we're told that the MnO4- minus ions are reduced to manganese 2 ions, so we know that turns into that. And the sulfite ions are turned into sulfate 6 ions, so that to that. And then to turn these into half equations, because they're in acidic conditions, I'll do them in this order. So I'll look at the atoms first, so Mn, that's fine. We've got four O's there, but we haven't got any O's here, so I need four H2O's. That's introduced hydrogen, so I'm going to use the H plus ions, the acidic conditions, to balance the hydrogens. Right, so all the atoms are balanced in that one. So we now just need to sort the charge out. So the overall charge at the moment on the left is 1 minus 8 plus, so 7 plus. Whereas on the right, it's only 2 plus. So we need to bring 7 plus down to 2 plus. So we need 5 electrons to do that. The other way you can do that is just look at the oxidation number change. So Mn starts at plus 7, goes to plus 2. So obviously it's got to gain 5 electrons to go down to that plus 2 oxidation state. So that's another way to do it. Next one, so sulfur's a fine We've got an imbalance of oxygen, we've got three O's here, but we've only got one there. So we need an H2O on this side. That's introduced two hydrogens, so we need two H pluses on this side. If we just deal with the charge, we've got an overall charge of two minus on the left. We've actually got no charge on the right. 
so we need two electrons on the right to bring that overall charge up to two minus to match the left hand side. Now we've got the half equations, we just need to add them together so that the electrons will cancel. So you can see we've got five in this one, but two in this one. So this is where that ratio comes from. So if we multiply that one by two, that'll give us 10 electrons in that one. Multiply that one by five, and that'll give us 10 electrons in that one. And therefore the electrons will cancel. So adding those two half equations gives us this. We can't leave it like this because we've got like terms left and right. So we've got 16H pluses on the left, 10 on the right. So the 10 on the right will go and this will go down to six. We've also got H2O left and right. So we've got five on the left, eight on the right. So obviously they're gonna go and that'll go to three. So that's the overall equation.